Hello and welcome to IP Harwell Polymer uh, factory here in Dubai. I'm pleased to take you to a tour to show you our polyol manufacturing facility, our blending facility, our quality control lab, as well as how we test our uh, new developed products in our production facilities. What I want to emphasize is that besides manufacturing polyols and using them in our uh, blending uh, polyols, we also test any new developed product in actual production conditions. So what we do is we uh, make these new blended polyols and then we directly go and check in actual production conditions in our presses as well as in our laminators. So let's go and have a quick tour around our factory. We use our own internal machinery to validate and test any product that we develop. And we iterate and we try again and again to make sure that we absolutely hit the targets that our customers are looking for. So let's go and have a quick tour and hopefully you will, have, you will enjoy this tour and you will have a very good understanding of our capabilities in this factory. Thank you. Behind me is our uh, 10-ton blender. Currently it's uh, blending a batch for our, one of our customers. And uh, this plant was uh, commissioned in 2012. And uh, we have a 10-ton blender and a 5-ton blender. And we can do different recipes with uh, different formulations, uh, with different growing agents. Uh, in those blenders. Uh, hydride, which is uh, powdery, as you can see, uh, is also another main ingredient to feed the reactor to make polyester polio. And as you see, it comes in big bags and it's loaded to our reactor and it's done to screw conveyor. It is a fully automated system and uh, it's one of the three main ingredients that can be used to make uh, polyester polio. Here we are in the uh, reactor facility where we manufacture polio. This portion is the part where we are loading the main ingredients to our reactor. Uh, behind me we have three tanks. In each tank there is a diethylene glycol. Each tank is about 30, ton, 30 metric ton in capacity. And uh, diethylene glycol is one of the main ingredients in uh, converting uh, PET and PA and PIR or PU into polio. So behind me is one of the main ingredients that you are seeing, which is the airplane glycol. This is adipic acid. As you see, it's a powdery uh, product. And uh, it's also one of the main ingredients, uh, which is used to convert PET plastic uh, into polyester polio. So as you can see, it's a powdery product and uh, it comes in big bags and we use this in our production. What we are doing right now is uh, we are converting the crushed PET preforms, which you see in my hand, and it comes like in uh, big bags, uh, also to make PET polio. So this uh, crushed preform which uh, comes from the market. We take it, we uh, put in the glycol and uh, other elements, and we convert this to a commercial grade polyester polio. And the good thing about this is it's the dense, so our cycle time is faster because it loads faster into our reactor. As you see. This is our final product from a PET crushed preforms, which is now in a polio form. It's still in IBCs and it's ready to go. What you see in my hand is a PU, PU and PIR crushed. And uh, this is coming from uh, the market or from our production. What we do is we grind it. And this is also a primary raw material to be converted into polymers, uh, polyester polyols. 
and it has to be in fine form because if it's uh, larger particles then it's going to be difficult to uh, to melt in the reactor so we usually like the largest size is about five centimeters no more but this instead of going to the land sites and to the landfills and polluting our environment can be converted to a polio that can be used for many applications okay this is our end product the polyester polio which i showed you like a few minutes ago where we had the crush preform that crush preform has been transformed into a value added end product polyester polio this can end up in our blending facility which we can make pollutant systems and it's a product it's a product that enhances the fire properties of the foam and uh, it preserves the environment and it's economical as i mentioned our uh, polyester production is fully automated in plc here we can show you like our screen where we monitor all the components which is being the uh, processed in our reactor, temperature, rotation, uh, what is the cycle time, what is the time the product has been processed, it's fully automated. So all we do is we load the raw materials and uh, PLC takes care of the operation of the whole machine and the reaction, reactor. Here is the finished product, the blended polio uh, in different formulations sitting in our warehouse, ready to be dispatched to our customers. Yes, here we are in our dry mechanical quality control lab. Here we basically do all the dry testing on our finished product. So in this machine we are basically measuring the thermal conductivity of the polyurethane foam to make sure that it's within the specs. Then we come here in this machine we are testing the compressive strength of the foam. The sample is put here and then it's compressed and then we measure to make sure that it measures uh, correctly within the parameters that we have. And here we have a special machine which we brought from Germany. We stress the foam in this chamber to plus 70 to minus 40 to make sure that the foam doesn't shrink when it goes out in the extreme harsh conditions of Dubai. So let's go now to the chemical lab where I want to show you also where all the uh, wet tests are done for the chemicals that we get from production. Yes, here we are in our uh, wet lab where all the chemicals in the liquid form are tested for uh, the quality control parameters that we have set. This is a titrator where we measure the characteristics of the polio that comes from the reactor. We measure the OH value, we measure the acid value, and we make sure that all the contents of the polio meet the specifications that we are looking for. Here in this uh, machine, the viscometer, we are measuring the viscosity of the polio which is coming from the reactor. And in this case, this is a PET polio and our QC people are checking the viscosity to make sure that it is within the specifications that we have uh, in our technical data sheets. This is a very critical parameter because if the viscosity is not correct, then when we uh, blend it, it will affect our uh, output on the production machines. So viscosity is one of the most important characteristics besides acidity and the OH value of the polio, which is coming from the lab. Here we are retaining the samples from the polioles that we have and we want to keep it and measure it over time to make sure that there is no layer separation. Uh, this, this ensures the quality of the polio is excellent and uh, it maintains its consistency when we blend in our blending facility. Here what I want to show you is a miniature reactor. So before we go and we do the large scale 
uh, trials on our reactor. What we do is we do a miniature test of the polio that we want to produce. So we put the small amounts of the components here, we cook it, we check it, and then after the initial results show positive information, then we move to the uh, large scale production on the reactor. So this is a very good way of minimizing uh, repeated tests on the large scale reactor and wasting materials. So what we do is at a small scale we do tests and then after everything is good we move to the next level where we go on the reactor and then we do large size batches. Here what we are doing is we're testing the fire reaction fire for the sample foam that we have uh, that comes from testing it in our reactor production conditions and we want to make sure that the foam is behaving according to the specifications that the customer has uh, requested. Uh, we have B2 and B3. B2 is when the flame exceeds more than 50, uh, less than 15 centimeters, and B3 is when the flame spread goes more than 15 centimeters. In this case, this is a PIR foam, and it should not exceed more than 15 centimeters to, to meet the B2. So we can open this chamber and uh, check the sample. And we can see here that uh, the flame spread has not exceeded the uh, 15 centimeter mark. It's right now here. So this is a B2, it's confirmed. So we can release this batch to the customer and make sure that we are meeting the specs. As you can see here, we have uh, our laminator 30 meters uh, in length and we are testing our own uh, PIR formulations on the line. Any new developments, we do it here, we check it, we test it and we make sure that it complies with the uh, technical parameters before we roll it out to uh, our customers. So anything, we uh, sell it in the market, we test it in-house and we are only the we are the only company in GC where has the in-house capability to test our own formulations in-house on the production level before we roll it out to our customers. So now the panel is coming from the production, from the laminator. We take this panel and we test in our lab. We make sure that all the QC parameters are in line with our specifications. If it's okay, then we release our new developments to our customers. So nothing gets sent out to our customers before being tested in-house. And we are the only company in GCC who has the fully integrated setup to test any polio from the startup, development process, in lab, in the reactor, to our blending, and next in our production testing, as you see right now. Usually at uh, production startups, the panel comes out, it's half filled. This portion, which will be basically scrap, what we do is we take this foam, we grind it, and then we recycle it. As I mentioned in my presentation, uh, we have all the presses in our facility to check also our formulations for discontinuous application. As you can see, we are sitting in front of our 16 meter money press. On this press, we can manufacture panels for cold storages, for refrigeration trucks, for housing. And we test our formulations for the longest length, for the, the, for the most width, for the most thickness. And on this press, we can make any panel up to the length of 16 meters at a thickness of 200 millimeters. So this is where we test any new development, where it is PIR, it's PURB2 or PURB3 to the stringent conditions to make sure that our formulations function before we roll out to our customers. Here what I want to show you is when we commissioned our 
uh, reactor in 2017 as you can see it's clearly more 2017 we took samples of the polyols from the reactor and as you can see there are two different colors of the polyol the one which is I would say yellowish it's uh, derived from terephthalic anhydride PA the one on the right here on my right is the PET polyol and as you can see the color is bluish and it's because that time the PET flakes we used was bluish in color so the color came slightly bluish but the amazing thing is after five years you can see there is no sedimentation no deposits no crystallization clear polyol this proves that the quality is superb and uh, when you recycle the material you get a product which is value added and it looks perfect clear excellent quality